browse, we'll browse to desktop. Um, I'll just go create a new folder here, just to show you. You know, just put in a fire or a folder, and we'll call it Fume Effects Fire. In case anybody wants to know how I render stuff, we're going to save it as a Targa image instead. TGA just to make sure it all takes correctly. All right, fire fumefix fire dot TGA save and just leave all these pre multiplied alpha compressed 32 bit. We'll just leave all those settings and click OK. Okay, so now it's going to save a sequence of just the fire. You know that's why I really like working with elements. So you know later I can layer them all into After Effects on their own because you know if you want the smoke and fire. Uh, done separately if you were going to do smoke you'd want that as its own element so you can add it in and adjust the smoke just right in the After Effects. If you render this all in one thing on your main render panel here it's all going to render together and you won't have any control over it but if you do it in elements fire elements and the, maybe the object you might have in there uh, you can go and layer them perfectly into After Effects and you know not you can just adjust that fires too bright you can tweak down the brightness of the fire and the smoke will stay the same or the, you know the same with the smoke and your object it won't affect your object at all so it's very smart to uh, do this in elements rather than as one big thing all right and uh, so basically I'll, I'll go ahead and render this out and bring it in the after effects just to show you all right uh, there we're loaded again okay go to after effects now and we're going to import it File. Let's put it to the desktop. A new folder. Gonna grab the first one. Target sequence. Make sure that's checked. Import it. Pre-multiplied. It was pre-multiplied. Click OK. And drop it in. And then we have our fire inside After Effects. You can see it's. You know, you can, depending on your <coughs> footage, you can go ahead and, like for the, where I set it pre-multiplied, you can see which one works better with your f particular footage straight on Maiden. You can try and see if that looks any different. Or just set it, you know, as we rendered it, uh, pre-multiplied. Make sure your frame rate was correct and everything. Square, yep, 30. All right, so depending on you know your background, but yeah, that's you know how we get fl the fire changed. Thirty-two back. All right, so everything looks fine. Fire looks good. You know we have a nice fire, and like I said, just you know once it's in After Effects, you can do what you want with it. Scale it down, change the colors, you know if you want, or just change the colors, and it's, it's you know kind of sometimes better to tweak the fires even more inside of uh, After Effects. You know, if you're looking for a specific fire, but, you know, you can't really colorize because then you get, you know, it's you get too blue of a fire. That's why it might be better to do it in the t max. So you get the exact color. You know, you can just do it from here. But, you know, I added the blue in there, so when you tweak the red and stuff, it's, you know, not giving that that blue fire unless you create two but having those different colors in there is not working or you can do a color replace and all that but it's better you know if you try to get the fire as close as you can in After Effects I mean uh, 3D Max and then you can um, tweak it even more maybe add some more color to it make it more redder darker you know depending on what you want duplicate just messing around in here. Uh, multiply just to make it look a little bit leave that one like that. See how it looks without any it's not too bad. You can do add, 
you know, that obviously don't look good. Overlay, overlay, and multiplier are usually the ones that I mess with. Let's see how that one looks with the overlay. Yeah, definitely helps make it look a little bit better just by doing that, especially down in this area here. And of course, you can do, you know, we can try distort, displacement, just to make it look more, even more fiery. You can go with maybe just the reds and, uh, you know, tweak that a little bit helps give uh, more of a, a fluid look to it. Turn wrap pixels, expand output, you know, try it on the luminance channel. Sometimes it's good to do the red channel because, you know, that's the color you really want the outer edges. But, you know, it depends on the fire, of course. You know, maybe that's too much. You just want to try to get that gaseous uh, look to it. By just playing with that. Let's go ahead and just turn one on, set it back to normal just so we can see this better because I have multiple layers and it's kind of hiding what I'm trying to show you here. You know, so this is what I mean when you bring it into After Effects, you can, you know, do a lot more to it to make it look even better. So just trying to make it look a little bit more 3 distic and fluidy. Let's try it on the red again. Maybe you can see red and luminance is fine. But, you know, here's displacement off and on. You know, it definitely adds a, a better look to it, you know, when you go and do it. So it's definitely more of a gaseous look. We'll see how that looks. It's definitely it's not a not too bad of a fire, that's for sure. Like here, see, and just just by adding that little displacement in there, you know, it, it definitely helps. And let's go ahead and do some. Um, make sure we're on the right one here. Yep. Add some vector blur to it and see how that looks. You know, you can get that stringy look. Let me go rise it up there. Maybe turn displacement off for now. Try different settings on this. Just to see what we come up with. You know, certain fires really look good. Um, changing this, uh, adding the vector blur to it. Especially the ones, actually, the ones that work the best are the ones with, you know, like, less detail and a lot more, you know, messy look to them, you know, because the vector bird cleans them up quite a bit. The fire looks pretty good without really any any effects to it. Oops, wrong way. Just trying to add a little bit of a stringy mist to it. You know, it could be useful for something. Oh, I mean, other than that, I mean, I think the fire looks fine, obviously, without it, you know, we're just... See, it just adds, you know, Vector Blur helps tighten these strings up a little bit more. You know, if you have, like, a really blobby fire, you know, that's what I was kind of trying to show you. So, you know, you can get away with, because that's what I was going for, to add the tendrils in there. And if you have a blobby fire, you know, it helps to use this to bring that out. Let's try just the reds, see how that looks. You know, so you get the stringiness, and then with that, we'd have to add the displacement after it to make the effect happen. So I'm going to pre-comp this because I added the vector blur to this. So in order for displacement to know I did those changes, you have to pre-comp this with the effect on it. So I'm going to go to layer, pre-comp, move all attributes, OK. We're not doing anything with the lower layer file. So now, if we add a displacement to this one, to store displacement, now it knows we made the changes. And we have, you know, the tendrils are there, basically. So, you know, that's... That looks pretty cool. You know, you just start off at zero and just adjust it 
you know, a certain direction depending on how 